Good afternoon, everybody. Can you see my screens okay and hear my voice? Cool beans. Just wanted to um, alert you guys. I'm having a bit of a migrainey kind of day right now. It sort of kicked in this afternoon, so if uh, you'll indulge me, it may be a little less entertaining today than it usually is, but I'm going to try to focus more on content as opposed to comedy, if that's okay. I'm going to also close this trade out if we get a few more ticks here. You know what? Why are we arguing over a couple ticks? We'll go ahead and close that out so we can focus on today. I have uh, the honor and privilege of presenting here today. My name is Michael. I am the founder of Back to the Future Trading, the president, one of two members here, partner in this company, which uh, together with my best friend and I started 14 years ago. And we've been helping customers find their trading centers now for well over a decade, thousands of customers all over the world. We have a 4.9 out of 5.0 trust pilot rating that we're very proud of with actual verified customers. <clears throat> and today I'd like to go over some stuff with you and show you some techniques that may help you become a better futures, Forex, equities, uh, cryptocurrency, commodities, trader, options, trader whichever you are focused on right now. I believe that for many of you, this is a missing element um, in your trading plan or one that can most certainly help you uh, accelerate what you're already doing. Um, just briefly, real quick, we're the only company, so far as I know, that uh, empowers traders with a very practical mechanical tool that tells them when and what direction to look for opportunities in the future. A few minutes into the future, a few hours, a few days into the future, depending on your time frame. Um, to prove that, we've also provided those of you that wanted a copy, a uh, forecast for Wednesday and Thursday across a fairly broad spectrum of instrument classes, futures, forex, uh, and crypto. And if you didn't get a copy of that, let me go ahead and uh, get you that here real quick. If you did get it, then you recognize this is the page. And then I'll go ahead and you guys let me know if you got that link in the GoToWebinar chat box. Tim, do you see that in there, Glenn? If you click on that link, you'll see that we've published the predictive behavioral times for markets like oil futures, uh, gold futures, the DAX, the Euro currency futures, the E-mini Dow, NASDAQ on a one minute, Euro dollar on a five, pound dollar on a five, Ethereum on a five minute chart. And so we're gonna be going over today how that's possible and what that means for you practically. And so I just want to reiterate what's happening here. Two days ago, 100% transparency, we published all of those turning times and directions uh, and emailed them out to about 18,000 people. And then on Wednesday and Thursday, we watched what happened, took place without any kind of input or influence from us. And now we are here to determine whether or not the signals worked or didn't. If there's any element of 
predictability, I guess, in the markets that we're trading. <clears throat> so before we go take a look at that, I just want to specify the difference between a signal and a setup. That is to say, when we go to sit down and we look at these signals together, it's raw data. These times represent historically uh, behavior patterns, times lately where markets have been historically driving up uh, or driving down. In the case of the E-mini S&P here on a three minute chart, we can see that the software was alerting us all of these times above the zero line or times that we were waiting for some sort of selling pressure signal. And then conversely, all of the times on the bottom of the histogram were times where we were waiting for some type of buying behavior pattern. Now remember, this chart was for Thursday and it was produced and distributed on Tuesday. So it's two days old. And these are all raw pieces of information. So there's no rule set associated with any of them. There's no stops or targets uh, at this point in the presentation, but we need to recognize what these times represented. The software looking back thousands of historical bars through a very powerful and potent indicator on the equally amazing NinjaTrader platform discovered things that shouldn't be there. Times where historically markets have been going up or going down with irregular regularity, meaning if it's truly random, absolutely fair, no institutional shenanigans, these times shouldn't exist. And so we see here 825, 925, 950, 1035 for a market like gold. Those are signals. And so if we come, for example, and go look at what took place in gold, we can compare what happened at the forecasted times and look at the chart itself. So again, 825, 925, 950, 825, 925, 950. When you compare what the Data on the web page I sent everybody two days ago to what actually took place. Glenn, do you notice there's some weirdness going on here? I mean, it's not 100% like Bernie Madoff accuracy, but if we look at 725 and 825, can we agree that the selling pressure we were waiting for and the buying pressure we were waiting for actually took place? Similarly, at 9.50 and 10.35, just like what was expected over here. And then similarly, 11.20 into 11.50, 11.50 into 12.15, 12.15 into 12.40, 12.40 into 1.30, 1.30 into 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock into 3.05, and then 3.05 into 3.50. So with the exception of the signal at the open here, this 9.25 signal, which we'll just put an X through it, would everyone give me enough rope here to say that most of the signals that we were expecting since Tuesday in gold futures actually produced what we were expecting two days later. What we were anticipating here, all Wednesday passed by, all Thursday passed by, and at the end of that train, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 out of 12 of the U.S. session signals actually did what was expected. Yes or no? What would you say? Am I out in left field here or 
have I established some baseline of credibility with you guys? Because if I'm seeing rainbows and unicorns and fairies, the migraine medication might be kicking in. Credibility established. Okay, cool. So I show you that because I want to frame everything in regards of in regards to an actual setup. So having done this now for over 14 years, we've figured out that if you hand this sharp tool to enough traders, eventually you start to see how most of them are using it for profit. And when we survey and ask anecdotally, hey, Mr. Customer, thanks for the great review. How are you using this tool? About two thirds of the time, the customers who are making money consistently are taking trend entries. Trend entries. Now, that's not to say you have to trade that way. That is to say, however, when you're studying success on a mass scale, it's interesting to note where most people end up in terms of a setup, a rules based mechanical system, maybe with some improvisation but still rules-based nonetheless. So on that page that I gave out with the forecasts, I noted a specific setup that we were gonna follow at the times that we were watching two days ago. And the first one's called a signal with trend. And in this setup, we're referencing a 120 period moving average. It's an EMA, a little less laggy than its SMA counterpart. And pretty simple, when the line is moving up on my chart, the slope will change and the line will turn white if it's moving up. We're going to buy at the close of the buying pressure signal. Our stop is going to be 1.5 average true range values away from the candle low. We will get in the trade and hold it until the next selling pressure signal. While the trend is rising, we're watching and we see when the next buying pressure signal is coming minutes into the future. At the close of that candle, we enter. Our stop is 1.5 average true range values away. And we exit at the close of the next opposite signal. Finally here, the trend is still rising. We enter at the close of the buying pressure signal time candle, and our stop is 1.5 average true range values away from the candle. This number is adjustable, by the way. It's just a good all around value for most markets. We get in and out by the close of the next counter trend signal. In effect, we have these windows of time that historically have produced bullish moves. And we're wagering, not on a hunch or some lagging indicator or some esoteric guru or YouTube channel with videos that are hard to understand. We're basically saying, hey, if JP Morgan messes with this market again, at the time they've been messing with it lately, I wanna stick my finger in the same cookie jar and see if I can't scrape out some of the crumbs they're pulling away for themselves. So that's a signal with trend. It's a very mechanical, discretion-free, trend entry rules-based system. There's a variation of it called a crossover. If the signal, for example, starts out below the moving average and then eventually crosses over and closes above the moving average, it has crossed over. Pretty innovative on the name there. When it does, we enter at the close of the crossed over candle. We put our stop underneath the candle that crossed over. And then we exit by the next selling pressure time. Vice versa for 
a selling pressure signal above the moving average. For example, if the moving average was here and then we had a candle close below the moving average down, I would put my stop above the candle that crossed below the moving average, enter short at the close, and then stay in until the opposite buying signal. So the crossover setup is a variation of the signal with trend. We just have to wait for it to cross over and catch up to the lagging trend. So that's setup number one that we mentioned on that crazy page of signals that we sent you. So if you're following along on that page, just to maintain credibility, you'll see this is the section where I outline the rules we'd be following today. So I'm not curve fitting anything to make it look better than it might have. I'm not changing the rules while the game is being played. I gave you the signals and the rules for the setup two days ago, just to prove that this works, because there's a pretty high bar of believability here, right? The next trade <coughs> is the one that always messes with people's brains. I want you to think of this like a failure with trend. <coughs> Forgive me, a failure with trend. So imagine for an instant that we're hypothetical bank robbers. And you and I sit in a car outside of a bank. And these are wonderful drawings. Nobody say anything. And we look inside the bank and we notice from 8 o'clock until 5 o'clock when the bank closes, there are three bank guards guarding the money, standing next to the cashier, standing next to the vault. So imagine we observe every day from open to close, from eight to five, there are three guards in the bank. And we observe that every day for a week and a half. We can see it. Well, imagine we show up. Imagine we show up on the 11th day, right? We're trying to get money out of the bank. And we look inside and eight o'clock, there's no guards. 8.15, there's no guards. 8.19, there's still no guards. 8.30, there's still no guards. There's a pretty good chance, Glenn, that something has happened. There's traffic on the highway getting to work. The guards are on strike, right? All of the guards were dating the chief of the guard's wife and he found out and there was violence. I don't know. Something happened where there are no guards in the bank when there should be. Okay. So when we have a puncture trade, what we're watching for is this. At 930, in this example, the trend is up. We're trend traders, right? We're going to emulate what most profitable traders do, buy when everyone's buying. And so at 9.30, this time represents our usual behavior pattern. It means lately, over the last several thousand bars, this market sells off or consolidates as people take profit from their longs. The fact that there's a blue dot here, Tim, is not some random occurrence. It's not some guru uh, hunch or intuition. That blue dot at 930 is telling us over the last several thousand bars, historically at this time, there's guards in the bank. And then the tally, watch this. It's keeping the opposite direction. It's rising and it's rising and it's rising. And Glenn, the farther it rises up, the longer it rises up, the odds that the institutions that drive these choreographed manipulations 
are decreasing and decreasing and decreasing. The odds are getting smaller and smaller and smaller that the people who normally sell at 930 are going to show up. And so with a puncture trade, I will put a buy stop just above the sell stop. And if it gets this high, all bets are off. I'm going to take a chance that there are no sellers here when, W-H-E-N, when they are usually there. I will get in. I'll put my stop just below the puncture candle and then stay in the trade until the next time. Does that make sense? Think of this like a failure with trend. <laughs> Some people think of it like a breakout trade too. A failure with trend. I called it a puncture in the rule system that I gave you two days ago. Okay. So here's the part of the, the webinar that I really enjoy. Because ultimately, time signals are very esoteric for a lot of people. In the last 14 years, I inevitably meet the person who says they know everything there is to know about time signals and the moon and the stars and the latitude and the longitude and the partitude. And I call those people Buddhist monks. They climb to the top of the mountain, they sit in a cave. They eat rice and warm water, and they study. They like the theology, the doctrine of trading, but they don't really understand the applicable, practical application of the thing, right? I can read a 100 books about karate. I can sit and watch the Shaolin monks every day for five years. It does not make me any safer in an alleyway with a 300 pound hell's angel it's not going to help me and so what i'm showing you here today i want to show you across a, a it's a relatively small sample size right two days but it shouldn't work at all if time isn't dominating in the market meaning I shouldn't be able to show you guys any kind of profit, any kind of statistical edge, if what I'm proposing doesn't work. So let me take the liberty of going through some examples here with you and showing you how you might be able to use this practically in the market you trade. Let's go back and look now at those signals we had two days ago. We'll look at this on the NASDAQ. We'll look at it on oil. We'll look at it on Bitcoin. We'll look at it on um, the S&P and SPY. We'll run through all of those briefly. But check it out. It's an if-then statement now, logically, that doesn't have any of the stress we normally have waiting for a signal that's random or a uh, better way to say it, lagging. So on my chart, you'll notice here something quite unusual, something NinjaTrader as a platform is really good at. No other platform allows us to plot signals in the future. It's a very difficult thing. And so being one of the most powerful platforms in the world, we're able to take advantage of that and put our signals over here on the right side. That means you're not sitting here all day wondering when your magic green arrow is going to pop up, right? Or where's the VWAP going to be in 40 minutes? Or my order flow, the delta is too small. I wonder when it'll be bigger. You know the time in the future. You know how long the window is. You know what direction the signal is. Nobody offers that because it's hard to do. So at 725, we're above the moving average. It's moving lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. And on this candle, it closes below the moving average. 
it's a crossover. We enter at the close and then we exit one tick down at 825. Now at 825, I'm pretty sure it closes below the moving average. And it's only on the next signal where it crosses over. There's that crossover word. And we enter at the close. We put our stop just below the crossover candle low. And now we hold on. Glenn, I hear the theme song from the movie Raising Arizona in my head when I see trades like this. How many of you have seen the movie Raising Arizona with Nicolas Cage? Remember when he's out looking for the diapers and there's a yodel? Ding. And I exit by 925. 925. That gold trade has produced $1,000 per ticket. $1,000 per contract if you're trading the micro version of gold that's a $100 move. In the span of what? One hour. Now, I want to ask you a question. Did I know when I sent the forecasts out what the report would say before it was released? There was an economic report today, wasn't there? Big one. So how did the software know the signal would be the low of the morning? How did the software know that 825 was going to be the bottom? And we were going to go up until 925. Well, here's a little side trail. You see, there's this really big company. And they are the financier to the world. A company called JP Morgan. And JP Morgan was one of the founding fathers of something called the Federal Reserve. Happened in a place not too far from me called Jekyll Island. The global financiers of the world got together and figured out how to subjugate the American economy eternally in a fourth unelected branch of the U.S. government. No mention of the Federal Reserve in the Constitution of these great states of America. Well, you know why they had to pay a billion dollars in their most recent fine? It's a very interesting thing that's relevant to our example. They will pay over $920 million in a criminal monetary penalty, criminal disgorgement, victim compensation to the CTFC. Do you know why? Because they manipulated precious metals futures. Precious metals futures. Now, I'm not making this up. I sound crazy to most people who stand still long enough to listen to me. You guys come to the webinar, I'm amazed because most people think I'm crazy. For over eight years, traders on JP Morgan's which? Precious metals. Precious. Ah, oh, my precious. Mm. So, Earl, they got fined a billion dollars for manipulating precious metals markets. And here we are two days later in a precious metal futures instrument. And they're still doing it. They're still doing it. This is what I love about what I do. Because most of you guys, you're staring at the unemployment report at 8.30 going, oh, I have no idea what it's going to be. And I'm looking at my MACD and I have my volume 
and my order flow and my delta and I have my levels from my higher time frame and I have my magic gerbil and if he goes on the wheel and it goes clockwise there's a pretty good chance it's going to do something and if it doesn't do something it'll do something else oh <laughs> I'm looking at this so and so the guys who always get caught manipulating the market have a behavior pattern and right before that report is released there's an established manipulation behavior pattern a scar in time a fingerprint on the clock and they know good gosh darn well what the report is going to say they write the report the fed and the banks are like when the FDA has the former president of Tyson Chicken as the dude in charge. Do you understand that? When you sit down and trade, he knows where the chicken guts are and they don't clean the machines. He knows where the chicken poop is and the salmonella. They know everything. And here we are two days later, and they're still manipulating that market. $1,000 on the first trade. What do we do at 950? Well, the trend's still up. Two thirds of traders who are successful take entries with the trend. I left money on the table, but hey, I made money. Enter at the close of the candle, exit by 1035. 1035 was supposed to be a selling pressure signal. 10.35 is a selling pressure signal. That's when we take profit because this is usually when the window closes and the guards come back in the bank. Could you have sold this and gone short until 11.20 and made $400? Sure. That's not my setup though. Enter at 11.20 and now I exit by 11.50. Uh-oh, we lost four tips. There's gonna be some losses, right? but our losses should be smaller than our gains, especially with a trend trading system. 1215, we'll just look at all of them. Close of the candle, trend is up, the time signal is long, and I have a window that lasts until 1240. Oh, got a whopping six ticks, it looks like, five, six ticks. Now we have our first puncture. It crosses over that blue line. My stop is underneath the puncture candle right here. And I'm going to hold it until the next signal. Didn't really make anything. Finishes right where it started. 130, trend is up. It's a buying pressure time. What am I expecting? I'm expecting JP Morgan to do what they've been doing lately across the last thousands of bars of historical data. To open the lid and take their old wrinkly white manipulating hands and shove them in that cookie jar and push the price of gold even higher. Until when? Until two o'clock. And that's a 45 tick move or a $450 day. Right there, $450 trade, not day. And then 305, if you like to throw caution to the wind, you get in, it goes against you, it goes for you, you finish exactly where you started, no gain whatsoever. So this is an example of a setup using two different trades. Signals with trend and punctures. So we have 10, 20, 28, 29, plus 4, 33. Uh, yeah, call it $30. So at the end of one day, using signals from gold, that's a $3,000 day per contract or a $300 day per micro lot. 
Any questions about how we can use the timing signals to take entries that are based on a statistically relevant edge? Yeah, and then we see the signals into the future tomorrow. So if I push to the right, there are all my signals for tomorrow waiting for me. They do not change. They do not update. They do not re, uh, repaint or disappear. I do not eat green eggs and ham. I will not eat them, Sam I am. These times are eternal. We don't do those things that the other companies do. Any questions, gentlemen, ladies? This is pretty bananas, right? Let's look at another one. My favorite is the E-mini NASDAQ. Now, before I even go messing with it, does it look like most of the signals did what we were expecting them to do at the times we were expecting them to do things? Would you say six out of 10 of the signals that we were expecting to go up or down actually went up or down? Yes or no? I'm going to take a sip. I think I'm busting through the brain fog here. Yeah, of course. So if we have a cursory review we were expecting an up move at eight o'clock forgive me i have to sneeze come on you get out of my body there it is thank you we were expecting a down move at 9 15 an up move at 9 39 a down move at 10 06 an up move at 10 24 a down move at 10.21, a down move at 12.39, 2.33, 3.39, and then an up move at 3.05, which is marginal, but it worked. There was a failure at 11.51, 1.18, and 3.03. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3. So 10 out of 13 of the signals that we were waiting for two days later is about 76%. In my marketing, when I mention this stuff in my emails, I say that it's usually 60 to 70%. So we're in the window, which is cool. Now check it out. We'll go through them one at a time. And we'll keep a loss or a profit record. Eight o'clock, we're not closing above or crossing over. We're drifting down. And right here, it punctures that line. It goes a whopping two or three ticks, comes back up and takes out the stop for a six and three quarter dollar loss. Then it crosses above the moving average at 8.33 during the unemployment report. That's fun, right? How did we know the NASDAQ was going to go up at the unemployment report two days ago? Hmm. Enter at the close of the candle. Your stop is below that candle. You exit by 9.15 for a $45 winner. 9.15, there's no puncture of the blue line, so it just goes down. Banks take profits. The next run is coming up. Close of the candle, 9.39. We exit by 10.06. Our stop is 1.5 ATR values below. Does not puncture the blue line at 10.06. It goes down like expected. The trend is still up. We enter at 1024, we exit at the close of the 1051 candle. Can I enter and exit at the open if I want? Yes, you can. This is a basic signal, uh, basic setup that I teach in the webinars to show you we can apply rules to this. Okay, 
1051, there's no puncture of that blue line. The guards are in the bank. Can't rob it today. Next signal is 1151, and it hits the stop. Womp, womp. There's a loss. So negative 6 plus 48 plus 70 plus 27, we give 35 of it back. Advanced lesson moment. If you are a if you are a customer and you would like to learn something, perk up, pay attention. When we arrive at the first stop in the direction of the trend. So Dave, check this out. The first time it violates the stop of the buying pressure signal in the direction of the trend. Earl, this is an indication right here that the trend has reversed. It means that the institutions who normally come in here again, and Earl, they continue to drive it up, they didn't. <laughs> They were like, yeah, no, uh, we had enough sushi at the bar. We're full. We're full of NASDAQ sushi. So the first time you see this cross, even though the moving average hasn't changed, it's a temporal indication that the trend has reversed. And you should look for shorts until you see a blue line crossed. And just a word to that, this blue line never gets touched. This blue line never gets punctured. This blue line never gets punctured. When you're watching the stop lines, they can be a predictive indication that the institutions have said, yeah, no more buying. And it's one way to potentially eliminate the moving average altogether. All right, that was fun. We now return you to our regularly scheduled webinar. We'll get rid of this, this, and this. Now at 12.39, look, details matter, right? We're going to look and see where did that candle close? Yeah, it closed underneath the moving average. A blue signal closing underneath the moving average is what? That's a trend entry. What do we do when we have a trend entry? Yeah. We trade in the direction of the trend. We enter at the close of the candle. Our stop is 1.5 ATR values away. We hold it until the next signal, and we're out. 118, two possibilities. It can close higher and higher and cross over the moving average, or the bank could be empty. Where are the guards? They're not here getting the chopper. Ah. We enter at the puncture of the white line. This is a failure with trend. No guards in the bank. Our stop is above the puncture candle. We are now in raising Arizona. Woo! How long do we hold it? I don't know. I'm so unsure. I'll listen to the stupid voices in my head and get out way too early. Uh-uh. Hold on. 233. Don't stop believing. Hold on to your order. And we exit, ding, at 233. I cannot overemphasize how critical it is for some of you that don't have this program to know there's a window of time that speaks to the reptilian fight or flight part of your brain that goes, hey, we should get out now. No, 
There's a reason to stay in. There's a reason this window of time is here. It's not based on any kind of guru intuition. I am not your guru. The world's got enough Tony Robbins and Dr. Phil's. 233, this one gets dangerously close to the stop. It's a little uh, little hair razor there, but doesn't touch it. And then finally swoops back down. We're out at 303. Next signal comes, we're looking for a failure with trend or a puncture. Ding! Our stop is right above that candle. It is never touched. We have a window of time that lasts until 3.39. And then we're out. How much did that come out to? From puncture to close, another $15. Last signal on the board. If you've got big huevos and you said, I want to let it all ride on blue, you <laughs> enter at the close and you exit by the next signal at 4.06. Another $25. Now, listen to me, knuckleheads. The losses are on the bottom. That's how I draw it when I draw up my P&L. Losses on the bottom, winners on the top. Do we need to add it up or have I made my point on the NQ? 48, 70, 27, 52, 100, 11, 15, 25. Minus 35, minus 7. Something's going on here. I didn't have to think about the MACD or the wackadoo noodle indicator down below. I didn't have to listen closely to hear if the guru was breathing fast and taking secret trades on the monitor I can't see. I didn't have to join 100 forums and parse through 500 Facebook pages to figure out what everybody else was doing. I knew the times in advance. I knew what to do when I got there. I knew how much risk I had to take responsibility for, and I knew how much time the trade had to work. Coincidentally, if you're a big SPY junkie, I want you to see that this works the same way on other markets. If you're an options trader, calls and puts and all that fun stuff, the last signal on SPY on the daily chart with the default values was a sell signal on March 6th. Bad news for bulls, that's going to last until April 21st. The earliest, if you're a customer and you know what technique I'm using right now, that will see any relief is March 21st. So SPY traders, option stock traders, we can look at this on a longer time frame for Tesla, for example, this window from January 24th lasts until March 15th. So you could have had a put in place on December 13th and a call in place on January 24th. We got above the moving average and then <laughs> During the investor meeting, Elon Musk showed his mentally challenged humanoid robots and never mentioned anything about an affordable car. And so the investors said, womp womp. Bitcoin on the five minute chart, very similar to the NQ. Most of your trades today were shorts and then punctures and then another short another puncture, and then another short in Bitcoin futures from 3.30 until the close. Hey, Tim, yeah, the SPY daily is just the standard default value. Let me just pull that back up here so you see what the setting is. How you doing, man? Good to see you, Mr. Murphy. Yep. So I have 3,650 days, 10 years of data loaded, and it's a 7.14.00 with a swing strength eight calendar days origination, default value. 
pretty cool, right? Yeah, and if you work your way down to the lower time frames, you go from a daily to a 60, right? You can go from a 60 down to a 15. The signals still work. They still do what was anticipated. By the way, Tim, remember that technique I showed you a second ago? I have a feeling some of you are going to take this out of the garage and use it. Tim, do you see the first time the white dot is violated right here, the stop line of SPY? When that happens, guys, a few of you maniacs are going to try this tomorrow. Put your stop right above the high. Go ahead and enter short at the stop line when it happens, like a stop in reverse. And that's the trend. And you'll just see more white lines punctured. Another one is punctured. Until you see a blue line punctured, the trend is still down if you'd like to get in a trade and hold it. Uh, Ethereum, same thing. Not a good day for Ethereum. Uh, again, short at 11.25, short at 12.40. Puncture right here. And we hold it until 3.15, and then Ethereum is still dropping. So you can be long in Ethereum at 9.05 and 10.10. You can try to buy the lows. I try to avoid catching a falling knife if I can. Oil futures, very similar story this morning. If we reference the economic report real quick, uh, give me a little bit of leeway here. I'll just add these up for you real quick. There's a stop out to start out the day. Now that you know how I'm keeping track, I'm just going to keep track here for us. How high did that one get? Anything over $500 in my rules, I count as a break even. So I'm going to count that one as a break even trade. Here we have a puncture and then a stop out. Here we have a crossover and a little two tick winner. Then we have, did that close above or below? Closed above. We have a stop out on the crossover trade. Closes below the moving average again. We're out at 1221, 48 tick winner. Short from here to here, 17 tick winner. Puncture trade, small loss. Re-enter short at 139 for a 41 tick. 248 until 345 is a 12 tick winner. 12, 52, 69 plus 50, 120, we'll call that 115, 117 plus 43 is 160, 140, 120, 110. Call it an even 100 ticks. On oil, using the same technique is $1,000 per contract in the large and $100 per contract in the micro. Using the same setup with the raw signals that I gave everyone a few days ago. Now, E-mini S&P across the last two days, the tale of two markets. If we look at yesterday with the chop from those signals forward, we had a negative two and a half dollar day, basically a small loss at the end of the day and some commissions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten trades minus two and a half dollars yesterday using the same signals. That moving average, very flat, flat moving averages are not bueno for trend traders, but it happens. And then today came, <laughs> when today came, negative three and a quarter, positive one and a quarter, puncture trade stops out, negative two, 
positive 5, positive 25, positive 9, positive a quarter. We got to break even. It went $500 in our direction, came back to break even. And then the trade you saw me take at the end of the session actually finished out $13. So this was a $34 move. Call it 30 when you take away the two and a half dollar loser yesterday. So at the end of two days trading the E mini SP with one contract, that's fifteen hundred dollars using the full size and hundred and fifty dollars using the micro. Could you qualify with an Apex funded account doing this every day, maybe? Small loss, small loss, big win, big win, big win, small loss, small loss, big win, big win, small loss, big win. You think they'd give you a 150K account if you could prove to them you could do that? I think so. <sighs> Any questions? about what I'm showing you guys here or anything we went over. Because at the end of this presentation, this is really my question. If I can prove to you, if you were in any way, shape, or form convinced that we could not only, A, believe markets were rigged, B, reference the fines that banks and institutions pay because of the rigging they get caught doing. C, as a result of our belief, scan the market for repeating times where they do cheat. And then D, when the time comes around again, anticipate a repetition of the cheating. And when the market rises, we rise with them. When it falls, our shorts fall too. I think I've passed the uh, the test, haven't I? If trading is about the past, then most of you were doing it right before you met me. You were referencing a lagging indicator, maybe not as lagging as others. You were trying to keep up volume spread analysis, support and resistance, higher time frame, order flow analysis, deltas. I've seen it all. It was my job before I was the founder here to investigate commercially available trading systems for another company. I've seen hundreds of them. And they're all regurgitated versions of the same stuff that's been around since 1920. Most of you are trading with an indicator or a method that's the same one your dad used. If trading is in fact about the future, a bet, a wager that prices will be higher or lower five seconds, five minutes, five hours, five days from now. This is the only tool you've ever seen that focuses on that dimension. And you have a blind spot. Your worldview is a little too narrow. If you think markets are fair and nobody knew what the report was going to be at 8.30 and we were all in it together and the FTC and the SEC and the CTFC, they're making sure we all play by the rules and you no. Know, every once in a while, if you're a sports fan, you'll hear about the referee that threw the game because he had a lot of money on it. How many of you are sports fans and you know the stories about an NFL referee or a baseball co uh, baseball umpire who got caught? You had a lot of money on the Braves, <laughs> a lot of money on Seattle, and he called a strike when it was a ball. He called it out of bounds. They had one. <laughs> they had one video I watched where you're supposed to go 10 yards in football and then they call it a first down and the guy with the flag 
the guy with the flag comes and he puts the first down flag right here. And the referee comes over and the ball is here. And Earl, he picks it up and he puts it on national television. He picks the ball up and he puts it right here. <laughs> That's what banks do every day you trade. That's the world we live in. No leprechauns, no unicorns. It's the darker forces. You can know when in the future that markets are likely to go up or down. That's the reality of this presentation. If you've seen me online in the Facebook groups, I use crazy things like moon cycles to get your attention, but it's much more precise than that. It's much more precise than that. This software I'm showing you here, I'll show you how to get it in a second. It's got 12,000 lines of code and we've developed it over 14 years for over 3,000 customers that continually rate us four and five stars. Find someone else who can do that. Find someone else who will give the times out two days in advance and then come back two days later to see what happened. Those people don't exist because it's hard. This is what I believe. The golden rule. My dad said, Earl, he said, Michael, it's not what you know. It's who you know. He worked his whole life for Pan Am, Pan American Airlines. He worked in the machine shop. He was the director of technical operations. If there was a problem with an engine, a JT-9 back there, he was responsible to make sure it got fixed. And for years, he watched person after person get promoted over him. Guys that were dumber, <laughs> uglier, smellier. And when Pan Am went bankrupt and they were cleaning out the shop and people were taking shopping carts of tools out to their car in retaliation for being laid off, my dad saw a picture. And there was a picture of his boss with all these other guys at a barbecue at his house. And they were part of a club, an organization I won't mention. You probably know what it is if you've been awake long enough. All these guys were part of the same club. And this guy was the grand poobah of the local chapter. And he promoted every single one of them, except my dad, who said, no, thanks. I don't want to be part of your club. And they all got promoted. That's what trading is. JP Morgan knows what's going on. Warren Buffett knows what's going on. All these guys know. If they don't tell you, you got to work a little harder to find when they're going to do the thing they're going to do with or without your permission. Don't be this guy. Don't do it. Don't be this guy. Well, my MACD shows bullish divergence on the down leg. That's great. <laughs> That's fantastic. Tell me more about your oversold stochastic. Tell me more about your levels and your latitudes and longitudes. Tell me more about those things. These are our customers. These are our customers. When the big fast car with the multi-billion dollar sponsor is driving down the road. We're driving behind them. Drafting means the car in front of you sucks you into the lead. If you've seen the famous movie, Talladega Nights, Shake and Bake. Drafting is what we do. We anticipate when the banks are going to move. When they do, we do. When that happens, we do it. We get in, we get out, we live our lives. If today is your date with destiny, you are not here by accident. If you've invested the time to do the research and look us up and 
figure out how all this works and how it might fit into your life, the program we're talking about is the flagship product, Tachyon Warp. Again, we have an excellent rating with actual verified customers with receipts. Trustpilot, we pay uh, $6,000 a year for the privilege of not being able to delete any reviews. All we can do when someone posts a review is reply to it. And so far, we're pretty close to perfect on that. Warp exists for everyone. Futures, Forex, equities, commodities, stocks and options, SPY, QQQ, LMNOP, whatever you're trading, as long as you've got a historical data feed for it, Ethereum, Bitcoin, then this software will decode it for you. It is an indicator for NinjaTrader. It is a lifetime license. NinjaTrader allows you to use data feeds from Forex.com, from TD Ameritrade, from interactive brokers. Multiple sources of data can be used with NinjaTrader. It is $24.95 for a lifetime license. If you click the Buy Now button, there is an opportunity for those of you that are futures traders to be part of a live trading room that meets 8 to 12, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. A lot of you guys are hands-on, show me, do it, in front of me learners. If you're that type of a learner, it'd be worth your while to take advantage of the discounted offer and join that room for at least a month. Whether it's um, Ron, my best friend and partner, who's in there trading signals uh, after 14 years, or now we're seeing uh, customers run the room for us. You can meet Colin out in the UK, who's using this to trade CL and the NQ and the Dow. Um, that would be a great opportunity for you. If you don't want that, don't buy it. You won't hurt my feelings, but it's there for those of you that need it. You're going to click on that button, agree to the purchase agreement terms, and then over here, W-A-R-P-O-F-F, -F, there's a promo code that's going to take $500 off the price. The accountant doesn't like when I do this. However, marketing people say I should, so I will. The promo code today is W-A-R-P-O-F-F, -F, warp off. Hey, buddy, warp off. Lowercase, no spaces, no spaces, lowercase letters only. You're going to get two computer licenses. This is a white glove installation. So we'll make sure it loads onto your computer. Everything's looking sexy. Get the templates set up for you while you're there so you don't have any panic moments. There is free video training in the archives of the website. You'll get a username and password that allows you to get in there and check it out. This is a lifetime license. The accountant doesn't like that we don't charge monthly or annual maintenance fees, all that fun stuff. If you ever change your computers in the future, there's no charge as of now for that. Just tell us what your new machine ID is and we'll get it squared away. Again, we have a 4.9 out of 5.0 Trust Pilot rating. Very unusual in this industry for someone to have more than a four, let alone close to a five. And so we're excited about that. And again, this will work for futures, Forex, equities, options, as well as crypto and commodities, bonds, notes, wheat, soybeans, palladium, doesn't matter. Whatever you're trading, you can analyze on here. There's no limitation to the instrument class. You can use this also on tip charts. You can use it on range charts. You can use it on volume bars. You can use it on Renko bars. You can use it on Renko Zilla bars. It is not necessary for you to reference time frames. And here's a little side note. This thing will actually generate price levels where tops and bottoms form too. I don't have time today to tell you about that, but it's pretty awesome.
There's a great video about that in the archive. In conclusion, tomorrow when you wake up to trade, you will be in one of two categories. Tomorrow when you wake up to trade or tonight, whatever your pleasure is, you're going to know when these turd mongers are about to push up or push down most likely, probably six or seven times out of 10, then you have a choice. You had a choice tonight to decide, hey, I saw this guy walk on water, and then he reached down, filled up a glass of the water he walked on, and turned it into a Chablis. That's what happened here tonight. I had no way to manipulate, no way to cherry pick or curve fit. 100% transparent. Two days later, profitable across the two days of every market I had on here. It's no magic. It's just the reality of the world. I showed you what's really happening back in the kitchen. You saw today how the sausage is made. It's not random, it's not report derivative, it's not anything other than a bunch of old dudes in a mahogany office somewhere giving orders down to the guys in the algorithm room, pushing these things up and down and taking your money every time it goes in one direction or another. That is the truth. These guys are the Matthew McConaughey character in The Wolf of Wall Street closest I've ever seen. I've met you, those of you that bought the software that came out of that world. You told me that's exactly what they're doing. Thank you for sharing that. But you got a choice. Tomorrow, do you want to guess? Do you want to watch your little patterns and your little things and your little gerber wheel to see which direction he's running? Or do you want to put 12,000 lines of code backwards into thousands of bars of historical data and see the world for the way it really is. It's your choice. Hey, Gig. Gig, you still alive? I can't believe you're still alive. That's a testament to modern medicine. <laughs> That's all those... That's all those healthy things your wife gave you over the years. <laughs> it's good to see you, man. Thanks for popping in. Everybody good down south by you? We are talking the other day. I brought you up. I'm glad to see you in here, man. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, it'd be time to get out there. Good golfing weather coming up soon. Guys, ladies, thank you for your time here today. I'm horsing around a little bit. I'm just a little tired. Um, thank you for tolerating my brain fog and uh, sitting through some of the more annoying parts where I sing and hum and impersonate people. In all seriousness, I'm honored that you're here today. It's a privilege to teach what I show you. This is our life's work. Uh, we empower traders to be profitable. We bring you from loss to break even to making money consistently. Um, we're good at it. We like it. It's one of the reasons why we do what we do. If you want to be part of a small band of rebellious time travelers and part of a community of people who've said enough is enough, we're uh, we're ready to adopt you and bring you on board. And if that's not the time for you today, um, no problem, no harm, no foul. Again, I don't believe you're here by coincidence. Most of the people that get this far, um, they know what they need to do next. And so if today's not your day, Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. May the wind be at your back. May the warm yellow sunshine fall upon your handsome and beautiful faces as we leave here today. May the mountains of adversity lay low before you. May the valley, valleys rise up to meet you on your path today. We wish you peace. We wish you prosperity. I wish you fellowship and community in a world that's getting smaller and more isolated. Um, I wish all of us peace as we seemingly drive headlong windows up 90 miles an hour into a third world war 
uh, be the light in the world. And um, we'll meet you along the way. Have a great afternoon, everybody. We'll see you next week. And welcome to everybody who signed up today.